thanks everybody for coming to our webinar about Percy Visual Engine. Uh, we've made great improvements to our Depper recently, and we'd love to tell you about them today. So let's dive right in. First, hi, I'm Lindsay Cade, a lead software engineer on the Percy team at BrowserStack. And um, this is a little overview of what we'll cover today. Uh, first, we'll go over um, what is Percy, what is visual diffing, and like what, what exactly we'll be talking about in that process. Um, then we'll take a look at what the first generation differ was like, uh, why we thought that we wanted to improve it. Um, then we'll go over some of the things that we were able to do with our diffing algorithm uh, after the next generation differ was built. Uh, what kind of UX enhancements that are now possible due to these improvements. And finally, what's next in the Percy Visual Engine. So first, a little intro to Percy and visual testing. Um, if you already use Percy, this will be a little bit of a review for you. But for those that are new, uh, I just want to go over um, a little bit about what is going on. So Percy is a visual testing and review platform. Um, so when visual changes happen in your app, uh, Percy allows you to review them to make sure that they are what you're looking for and expecting. Um, so what is visual testing? Uh, it fills the gap between functional testing and manual testing. And, you know, like we're biased here at Percy, but uh, we believe that visual testing helps teams work faster uh, with less fear of change. So what kind of things are we talking about when we are talking about visual testing? What kind of things can you catch? Um, so here's an example. Um, the pre-order button is overflowing its bounds and it looks, looks kind of bad. Um, here's one where the text is overflowing the container it's supposed to be in and overlapping the background image. And here's one where um, some text is like on top of each other uh, and you can't read it anymore. So functional testing would pass with all these examples because you would need to like test that the text is on the page. And in all these examples, the correct text is on the page, but it doesn't look right. Um, so to summarize, functional testing tests whether a site behaves correctly, and visual testing um, can check whether your page looks correct. So hopefully with these few examples, you can see that while functional testing is always great, um, visual testing is a great accompaniment for your functional tests. Uh, this gets even more exciting <laughs> Uh, as much as testing can be exciting, uh, when you think about like testing your all your pages in like each device that your users might look at them, in each browser that your users might look at them, um, different screen resolutions, and then like different app states, the combination of all of these variables together is an enormous number of things that you would have to test. And it's like impossible for you to check every change to your app and all these states manually. So um, that's where Percy comes in. It lets you have these visual tests automated. You can do them in an automated way um, and you can see the changes that were introduced in your app, um, in our UI and approve them. So how do we get these things that you approve or don't approve in our app? Um, uh, we first start with your app. Um, you write your test suite, and then you add the Percy snapshot call uh, in one of our many SDKs. Um, this will send us a DOM snapshot, which is a copy of the HTML document and all the assets that make up a page. Note that it is not an image at this point, which is a common misconception. It is um, just a copy of the DOM and all the assets. Once we have that, we send it to our rendering pipeline. Uh, we render the DOM and assets in actual browsers, real browsers in the real environments that your users would be using. And um, this outputs an image of the website. 
Uh, once that happens, we receive this image into our differ and we compare it to the last version of that snapshot so we can highlight the changes before and after your code change. Um, finally, we send that diff image to percy.io where you can review it in your build. And so the thing that we're talking about today is the differ part. Um, the All the changes that I'm going to talk about were in this section of the pipeline. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And so let's get into it. Um, to talk about why we wanted a new differ, we first should talk about what we thought could be improved with the original one. So let's take a little look at why we thought that we could improve it. Um, first of all, the previous differ was written in 2015. Um, in 2015, um, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars was number one on Billboard Top 100. Uh, Best Picture was won by Birdman. And Apple just released the iPhone 6. Um, so that was seven years ago, which for like a person is not that old, but um, it's pretty old for software. So we thought that it was time that we could probably make improvements. Second, it was written in Ruby and Ruby is a great language and you can get lots done with it, but uh, it may not have been the best choice for operate for the kind of operations that we needed to perform in our differ. And third, um, the main image processing logic was done with image magic. Image magic is is like a pretty a pretty cool tool um, for a lot of stuff. The manipulations you can do with it are are a little bit basic, and you might even say it's magic because uh, you can't really see inside it at all to figure out what it's doing internally. Um, it's just kind of a black box, and so we couldn't really make a lot of optimizations or or manipulate it in the ways that we wanted to do. So we thought that we could probably find a better tool for this, for our case. Um, so this combination of setup uh, worked for us for a long time. Uh, but again, we decided we needed a more powerful set of tools um, and infrastructure to build our new differ on. Um, there's probably better languages for image processing and data science, uh, wider communities with open source add-ons for similar purposes to ours, and easier manipulation and maintenance of image processing code. We knew it was out there, but we just had to find it. Um, so after some research, we decided to rewrite our differ with Python 3 and OpenCV. With these tools, we could gain um, the speed of OpenCV processing, a wide community of libraries and open source discussions for image processing. And additionally, um, it would be much more extensible uh, building on top of these tools rather than image magic. So to start this process, we wanted to copy our old Ruby differ into Python with OpenCV kind of on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, we wanted the exact same features in both so we could get a benchmark of what it looked like uh, before and after this update. Uh, we kind of took the rebuild the plane while it's flying approach, um, and there was no disruption to customers when we switched our differ from the Ruby version to the Python version. However, um, one thing that you might have seen is uh, a performance gain. After we did this, everything got a lot faster, even though it was doing the exact same processing. Um, for one comparison analysis, a comparison, uh, an analysis of one comparison, um, the P50 speed was 68% faster, P99 was 35% faster, and Pmax was 90% faster. Um, so the diff that you received in the Percy review screen would have looked the same, um, but it would have been processed faster. So that was a great win to begin with. And um, now that we had a baseline, we could start adding more cool stuff on top of our differ. 
So let's talk about what kind of improvements we have been able to make uh, now that we have changed the infrastructure of our differ. Uh, first, I want to take a step back and and talk about like what is always the goal of our differ. Um, we always want to decrease noise for our customers, and we always want to highlight important changes. And so our challenge is always, you know, telling the difference between important changes and noise. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of different kinds of noise uh, that we wanted to improve for our users um, that the Percy Visual Engine allowed us to do. Um, the first is layout shift noise, and the second is non-deterministic rendering. And I'll go over what those mean um, as we cover them. So first, I'm going to talk about layout shifts and more specifically, vertical content shifts. Um, what we mean by this can be seen in these two images. On the left is a version of the Ember Guides website. On the right is an updated version where the first paragraph has been edited and the code blocks have been split into two. Um, but the rest of the page under the fold is exactly the same. So what this means is that the left page is a little bit longer and the right page, because of some edits in the top of the page, has gotten a little bit shorter. So that's the vertical content that has shifted. In the first version of the differ, um, you can see that this div is very noisy. It was noise all the way down, even though the only change that the code change introduced was at the top. And if we zoom out on this diff, uh, we can see again that it's quite noisy. Um, it's not surfacing the important changes. It was still like kind of helpful to know that the page did change, uh, but it was pretty hard to review. With Percy Visual Engine, we were able to apply a proprietary next level technique in order to surface the most important changes that our users would care about. So here you can see the old diff that we just took a look at, uh, and that was generated with the first version of the differ. And on the right, uh, we can see the output generated by Percy Visual Engine. Uh, the only parts that are highlighted are the top area where the text shift took place and then the bottom, which indicates that the diff changed height. So this was a great improvement that we could build on top of the rewrite of the differ. Um, here's one more example. In this example, a bar was added to the top of the page, uh, which shifted all the text and all the content of the page down by two pixels. Um, in the diff, you can see that everything that's present on the page is highlighted as a diff, even though none of it changed, only the purple bar was added and shifted everything down. With Percy Visual Engine, all the, annoyed, all the unneeded noise disappears. Uh, only the change that actually happened is highlighted. Um, there's a red bar highlighted here, which may be hard to see on the projection, but if it is hard to see, I have a, a thing to show you coming up, which would make it uh, easier to find. So um, that's vertical content shifts. And it happens a lot on the web. You can imagine like inserting or deleting content from a page would shift the content, the rest of the content up and down. Um, so, so we're really excited to have this uh, available to us with Percy Visual Engine. So the next kind of noise that I want to talk about is non-deterministic rendering. So back in the day, um, we, Percy, rendered pages with just Chrome and Firefox. And we took great care to control the containers that these processes were running in. We had a, we had a control over every part of the process. And so this was less of a problem. But now we've been adding a lot more browsers um, thanks to browser uh, existing infrastructure. Um, however, 
Um, these new renders are happening on actual hardware, um, which was not the case with with Chrome and Firefox alone. So when you render a screenshot with Safari, it's running on an actual Mac. And when you render a screenshot with Chrome on Android, it's running in an actual Android device. Um, so this allows us much less control over the rendering environment um, and things like GPUs, chip architecture um, can affect how a page renders between from time to time. So this has uh, been something that we have wanted to improve for our users for a while. Um, but but maybe but maybe you're like, okay, well, actually, when I refresh my website in Safari, like it looks the same, actually. like this is not this is not real. Um, so the noise that I'm talking about is something that people wouldn't really notice. Um, it's it's something that the browser does that a human wouldn't notice and uh, but Percy's diffing algorithm is quite sensitive, and so we can pick up on these things. Uh, but if a human can't notice it, we don't really want to show it to our users. Um, so let me show you an example. So here's two images, um, and they look pretty much the same. Um, not a big difference, but if you flip back and forth between them, you can see that they're pretty subtly different. Uh, it's not due to a code change and the customer probably wouldn't care that this changed. So we don't want to show them in a review. Um, here's another example. Again, I can't spot the difference between these two with my eyes. Um, and if you can't spot the difference with your eyes, we don't want to show it to users, but you can see, whoops, you can see that um, there's a slight difference in rendering between these two avatars. So we studied these um, examples for a while, and eventually we decided that this was an this was a genre of noise that could be put down to anti-aliasing uh, differences in anti-aliasing between um, different renders. So when so we were doing kind of research about how we could improve this, and we found this paper. Um, that outlines a method to detect whether a pixel is anti-aliased or not. Uh, this was published in 2009, and you can find it at the URL here. Um, so we analyzed this paper, and we broke it down, and we implemented our own version inside uh, Percy Visual Engine. So now Percy and Visual Engine can analyze each pixel and tell whether it's anti-aliased or not. Uh, so the results are pretty great. Um, in the middle column, you can see that uh, in the first generation differ, we would pick up this anti-aliasing noise, uh, which was not ideal, not caused by a code change, and therefore users wouldn't care about it. And in Percy Visual Engine, um, these diffs become blank. So we're ignoring these noisy changes that are not important to be reviewed. Okay, so that was one kind of noise, anti-aliasing noise, and the second kind of uh, non-deterministic rendering noise I'm gonna talk about is text shifts. So because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier with the devices and GPUs, um, text can sometimes slightly change between renders. Um, again, looking at these two images, they're pretty much the same. I can't tell the difference between them. Uh, but again, if we flip back and forth, we can see that the letters shift left and right slightly. Again, not due to a code change. So we don't want to show it to users. So to compensate for this, uh, we introduced an OCR library and some machine learning techniques uh, into Percy Visual Engine to kind of tell whether a user would care about these text shifts. Uh, if it's not important, we remove the diff and you can see the comparison between the first generation differ diff and the Percy Visual Engine diff um, on this slide. So these are just some of the improvements to the diffing algorithm that we've made. And now I would like to move on to some of the UX 
enhancements that the Percy Visual Engine has unlocked for us as well. Um, this is because we have so much more control over what data, what we do with the data once we get it into the Percy Visual Engine and what data comes out of the diffing process. Um, this has allowed us to do some cool stuff with our UI. So let's say uh, you had you wanted to change this icon in your app and you wanted to add these like tick marks around um, the thumb icon. And so you push your change to Percy and you want to review the diff. Um, but this icon is like pretty far down the page. Um, and if you look at it on a mobile screen, it's like really lost within the height of this uh, page. So it's pretty hard to find the diff that you're expecting. So to help with this, we have introduced the diff highlighter. We've added a bar to the left of the image uh, that highlights exactly where your diff is. So it's really easy to dig in and see where your diff is. Our team loves this feature. I love using it. It makes my life way easier. So we hope you'll love it too. Another thing that has been unlocked is single element capture. Um, with the Percy Visual Engine being so much more easily extensible, we were able to adapt it to not only take full page screenshots, but also uh, inputting an HTML element selector and screenshotting only that piece of your page. So let's say your team is in charge of the footer menu. Uh, you might not have access to the rest of the homepage content. And so you're only editing the footer menu and you only want to see that in your Percy diffs. Uh, it's very easy to do this. You would uh, use your regular Percy snapshot call. Um, this is in JavaScript, but we have many SDKs um, and it should work for all of them. So you have your regular sna Percy snapshot call and uh, you can just add a scope uh, property to the options argument. And uh, in Percy, you will see that only the element that you selected will be captured. So you can review only the pieces of the page that you want. Finally, um, the Percy Visual Engine updates have allowed us to ignore specific regions. So let's say you have a randomizer in your tests that cycle images or dates. Uh, you could use Percy-specific Percy CSS to ignore these, or um, you'll also soon be able to draw a rectangle on the screen to ignore these specific regions. Um, in once you do that, in future builds, um, the diffs behind these ignored regions will no longer be surfaced to you. So you won't have to review these flaky um, tests anymore. Uh, we're really excited about this feature and it's an act of development and it will, should be released pretty soon. So I wanna just quickly go over uh, what we covered. Um, First, we covered, uh, we, we asked what is Percy, had a little overview of life of a snapshot, and then um, uh, focused in on the differ. Um, we talked about some of the problems with the old differ and some initial speed improvements that uh, happened by updating from Python, no, from Ruby to Python and image magic to OpenCV. Uh, we talked about types of noise that were able to be fixed by Percy Visual Engine, um, vertical content shifts, anti-aliasing detection, and text shift detection. And finally, we went over some of the UX enhancements that have been unlocked by the improvements made to Percy Visual Engine. So what's coming next for Percy Visual Engine? First and foremost, we think that Percy belongs on the blockchain. Percy is going fully Web3 in the next year. No, I'm just kidding about that. We're not going on the blockchain. That was a joke. Okay. So anyway, um, for further improvements, um, we're always interested in reducing noise. Um, the kind of noise that I talked about today are not all the kinds of noise 
that exists. So we're always looking to uh, improve that experience for our users. Um, we've also got some ideas about intelligent layout parsing, how we can bring that into our diffs and improve the review experience. And of course, we're always looking to make the diffing process faster for our customers. Um, if you have any other ideas, we would love to hear from you and you could reach out to our Twitter at uh, Percy underscore IO. Okay, well, that's it for this webinar and thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed learning more about all the cool stuff that Percy Visual Engine has evolved to offer. Uh, you can get started for free at percy.io if you want to check it out more. And we're also hiring a US-based senior software engineer, and you can find the job description at browserstack.com slash careers. <clears throat> so now I'd like to open the floor for Q&A. You can put it in the Q&A tab in the Zoom menu. Um, you also probably see a poll pop up. I'll give, um, we, we would really appreciate if you took a few seconds to answer it and I'll give you a few seconds to take care of that. Okay, thanks so much for those of you that uh, reply to the poll, and I'll now go into Q and A. Um, first, uh, is any of your diffing code open source? Um, it is not. Uh, this is kind of like some of our secret sauce, so we don't we don't super want it to be open source. Um, but if you have any other, if you have any specific questions, we might be able to talk about it. Uh, next question is Percy Visual Engine the same as Percy CLI? Uh, no, it is not the same. Um, Percy CLI is a way for users to like send us, send a Percy stuff. Um, and then Percy Visual Engine is like the thing that happens behind the scenes to, to give you back your, your diffs. Uh, so it's not quite the same. Uh, let's see. Uh, can Percy test features which are behind some clicks, for example, pop-ups and drop-downs? Yes, uh, this is definitely possible. It all depends on what you can do in your test. So in your um, automated test, you would just need to set that state up for us and then send us and then take a snapshot at the moment that your pop-up or drop-down is open. Uh, that's how you would do that. Ignore regions, huge win, thanks. Yeah, it should be out soon. I'm actually like uh, one of the developers on it. So after this webinar, I'll go work on it some more. <laughs> um, can we capture multiple elements under scope? Uh, not right now. Oh, right now it only accepts one element per Percy snapshot call. Um, if you wanted to capture more than one element, you could make more than one Percy snapshot call and uh, just make sure to give it a different name, a different snapshot name. Uh, let's see. How granular can the ignored regions be? For instance, some numbers in a block of text. So I think this is asking like if the numbers move, um, could the ignored regions follow it? Uh, right now, that is not the case. Um, you would draw a rectangle on the screen and it would be at that place in the image um, until it was removed. So if like more text was added to the paragraph and the number moved, uh, it wouldn't be able to tell that the number moved. If you did want to do that kind of thing, uh, you could put a span or like some HTML element around, around the number that you wanted to ignore and use um, Percy specific CSS to ignore that specific element, uh, no matter where it is on the screen. Let's 
see. Um, let me check the chat to see if there's any questions. Um, the updates to the diff engine are currently available, correct? Yes, that is correct. All of the changes that I have talked about today are out and available, except for ignored regions, which uh, is in is in development right now. Uh, is Percy only available for apps or can it be used for websites? Um, it can be used for both. If you can generate, uh, it actually is mostly used for websites um, where it, we can send a DOM snapshot with all its assets to Percy as I, as I talked about. Um, and that's like the golden path way to use Percy. Um, for apps, you can now uh, render on Safari on iPhone and Chrome on Android. And so uh, those are available for app testing right now. Let's see. What else? Have you investigated changes in browsers parsing colors as a source of noise? I have found browser updates can change how colors display in screenshot diffs. This is really interesting. Um, color Colors are like surprisingly slippery as this person has noted. Um, we haven't really, um, we don't make color change adjustments uh, based on browser upgrades. That's not specifically something we do, but we do think a lot about um, how to take care of color differences in Percy. Um, yeah, I hope that was an okay answer. <laughs> Uh, is it possible to download all the snapshots at once from a specific build? Uh, it is not, you probably can't get them all at once, but there is a public API that you can find information about on docs.percy.io that will allow you to like write a script that can kind of like go through each um, snapshot in a build. Uh, do you use Percy internally, such as in your CI CD pipeline? Yes, we do. And it's great. Um, we use Percy for all our front end builds. So we get to see um, all the things that our users do. Um, it's, it's something that I love about working on Percy. Uh, thanks for asking. Okay, well, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you all so much for taking time from your day to um, come learn about Percy Visual Engine. Uh, hopefully you're excited as we are for all these changes. Thanks so much. <laughs>